thanks to the supporters of channel member Rob Perring. Well, we already know just how good this team is domestically, so today we get probably the biggest test we could possibly have on a European scale. We play both Barcelona and Real Madrid in the Champions League. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 17 of non League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have those two massive Champions League games. We're away against Barcelona and at home against Real Madrid. Since you were last with me, we have continued our excellent start to the league season. And I'm also getting better at doing rotation. I'm rotating the teams around and trying different players in different positions. And we're still winning while we do it. It's all very exciting. But this is what the Bundesliga looks like five games in. I know it's early days, but we are top of the league we're the only undefeated team in the league still only five ga only five games in which is pretty poor if you ask me and we did also pick up a win in our first champions league game as well going to ajax and beating them 2-1 so now it's the big test i mean if we can beat barcelona at the new camp then i think we're ready to win the champions league aren't we did they win it last year? Who won it last year? Barcelona are the Champions League holders. So we are playing against the team that won the Champions League last year in their backyard. If we can beat them, we're going to win the whole thing. It's a big if. This is the team. It's Antonio Carlos in goal. A back four of Van Veen, Suarez, Moorman and Schakowsky. As you can see, we've abandoned the libero thing for now, but I do like the idea of getting someone alongside Van Ajma. Um, So we've got Van Veen. He's had a new lease of life as an inverted wing back and he gets up there alongside him with Schakowsky forming that three at the back. I think it makes us more solid defensively, but also allows us to control possession in midfield a little bit better. So I'm enjoying how this has worked the last couple of games. We've then got Van Eijmer at the base of the midfield with Bellingham and Carrier ahead of him. Marrera on the left, Herrera on the right and Big Kev up front, who is probably the biggest surprise of all of this. Bearing in mind last year, Emil Hiskey and Egan scored over 50 goals between them or an incredible strike partnership with Big Kev having to make do and feed off scraps from the bench. To be fair, he did still get 20 goals off of the bench. Um, in terms of a lone striker, he seems to be the only one who's capable of doing it on his own because he's the size of two men, probably. Um, but we've tried Egan there quite a lot and he's just really struggled as a lone striker. I kind of wish I'd have accepted the big offer for Manchester United that we had from him back in the summer. Um, Hiskey's spent more time out on the wing than he has up front because of his versatility letting him down and making it difficult for him to cement a spot as the striker because I can just stick him in wherever. Um, and meanwhile, Big Kev, he's played a couple of games in central midfield where he does look very good as well. But playing up front as that big focal point centre forward, he's uh, he's proving to be quite effective as a lone striker, more so than he was as part of a two. It's strange how different players play to different levels in different systems. Who knew tactics might actually have some bearing on how successful a football team is after all? And here's me thinking you just have to sign the best players on the never-never and cram them all onto the pitch at the same time and success was guaranteed to follow. You learn something new, even after nearly 30 years of playing football manager. Um, right, Barcelona have had the uh, the the majority of the early possession here, certainly in terms of highlights, and they are running at us again here, and they have got the breakthrough. And uh, I am wondering how sensible an idea it is to play Van Veen as the inverted wing-back when they've got Lamine Yamal on that right-hand side, who probably at this point is the best player in the world. And uh, Marrera did his best to tackle him. Van Veen did get out there to make the challenge as well. Neither of them were successful and Yamal slides it across for the assist for the opening goal and Barcelona are coming at us again. And I think we're just getting another one of these the Bundesliga is not very good culture shocks, which unbelievably some of you are still arguing with in the comments section. I won't have it. We are so much better than every other team domestically. But when we get into Europe, we saw it in the Club World Cup as well, when we play against the real top tier teams, we're just not on their level yet and I hope that this new system that we're using would help us get to their level, um, but we're about to go 2-0 down and we've not had an attack yet and <laughs> it seems like there's still a long way to go before we're a uh, 
before we're a proper top level team, which bearing in mind the amount of money we spent is quite alarming. But it's it's actually and it's such a cop out excuse, but it's actually quite difficult working out a tactic to beat the best teams when you only play them five times a year in Europe and it doesn't matter what tactic you do domestically, you're going to win anyway. And that's, like I said, I've compared it I've compared it before to managing in Scotland and it is very much like that because it's very difficult to plan for playing Barcelona when nobody domestically is close to their level and we just blow everybody away. It doesn't. It genuinely doesn't seem to matter domestically what we do. Like I say, we've. I bet. I don't think I've played the first eleven at any point in the Bundesliga. We're just playing combinations and trying things out, and it's still winning. Um, Carrier trying to get a goal back here, and there is big Kevin. I mentioned how well he'd been playing as the lone striker, and there's another goal for him immediately upon the restart. If we can drag this back to a draw then we save a few blushes, I think. And in, to be fair, if we draw the away game against Barcelona and then beat Real Madrid at home, that's still the kind of thing that teams that can win the Champions League are going to go and do. Remember, Barcelona last year, the best team in Europe. So if we can come here and somehow grab a draw or even a narrow away defeat, there's, there, there is hope, I guess. So let's keep pushing at and We're going to keep attacking and we're hopefully going to grab a goal of our own. Look, they're doing the little back three thing, turning their back four into a back three as well. It seems to be the done thing. I mean, I know it's something that's been happening throughout FM24 because of the new positional rotational stuff, which I experimented with a lot during the beta, probably too much in the beta and got bored of it. So I stopped doing it for a long time, but it's back and I do still really like it. And um, what I like less is the fact that the Barcelona are really good. I don't want to see the replay. It just makes me very unhappy. Barcelona and Inter seem to be the two teams. Inter obviously have been problematic for us before as well. Um, they won the Club World Cup last year and uh, Barcelona won the Champions League. And obviously the year before, Inter won the Champions League, beating us in the final. So they are definitely the uh, the teams to beat and the teams to aspire to get to the level of. And we're certainly not there yet. I mean, the fact that we were able to get... I mean, Herrera has come in and become a real key player for us, a really good player. He was a fringe player who couldn't get in the team at Barcelona. So I think that, that says a lot. But then to be fair, Big Kev and Conor Egan were fringe players who couldn't get in the team at Bayern Munich and we're much better than them. So... It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like I say, different players in different teams and different tactics can perform differently. We've learned that. That's this week's lesson of the week. Um, right. What are we? What on earth do we do here? Because what we are doing isn't really working. I'm very disappointed in Jude Bellingham. I expected him to grab a game like this by the scruff of the neck, and I don't. I don't think we're getting the same level of performance out of Van Aijma playing him behind I mean he was playing as the deep lying playmaker in a two last year and was controlling matches his job isn't really to control matches now which does complicate things because obviously we've got Bellingham to control the matches he's our playmaker we're not going to take we're not going to make Bellingham a box to box midfielder and get Van Aijma back on playmaker duty because that it just seems counterintuitive but then at the same time Bellingham's not played well today either so we'll take him off he, he has to learn he hasn't played well today so he comes off Ayadeli, Maui and Emil Hiskey all on and hopefully we uh, we can grab another consolation goal and like I say if we like, if we lose by the odd goal that's so poor for my from Ayadeli. oh dear you can have the best goalkeeper in the world, like we do, but it doesn't matter if you do that to him, because there's no, there's literally nothing he can do about that. And he could see he was frustrated there, and understandably so. We've come here and been absolutely battered. We spent two hundred million pounds on, or two hundred fifty million pounds improving the defence this summer. I haven't seen an improvement today. Her, maybe. This is just a maybe. Maybe we shouldn't have come to Barcelona on an attacking instruction. Although, to be fair, if you look at the XG, we've actually edged the game on XG. So as much as I'm seeing Big Kev's praises, and he has had a good game. Uh, I mean, actually, it's not his fault. We've scored one from a 1.78. That's not too bad. They've scored four from a 1.6. So questions have to be asked of both the goalkeeper and the defence. Maybe we got the defence wrong. Maybe... 
defensive shenanigans aren't the thing and we should just go back to a normal back four. The problem is, of course, I can't experiment again until Real Madrid because we're just going to beat these three teams without even trying. And that's the difficulty. It, it, so <laughs> it sounds like it's not really a problem, but I promise you, it's a problem. Well, as predicted, that was uh, relatively straightforward. Dispatching those three teams, didn't even concede a goal and um, didn't even play Antonio Carlos in the last one because why not share the the uh, the game time around a little bit? Bruno Herrera, by the way, more than anybody is probably, actually, maybe not as much as Big Kev, but he's absolutely loving this new system. Um, he wasn't really a regular starter last year, only started 16 games because obviously there was only space for two out of him, Carrier and Marrera, and he was often the one who missed out. But this year, he's uh, he's started most games, eight starts, six goals, three assists, a 7.81 average rating in the league. He is, uh, he is having a very, very nice time. But after all of that shuffling around, um, it leads me back to the same 11 that we played against Barcelona. I think this is our best 11. I have stopped the shenanigans with the... Uh, with the fullbacks, they're just playing normal fullback roles. So uh, let's see how they get on. I guess I'm I'm hoping for a better performance than we had against Barcelona. Not even that's not even fair. The performance was fine. We saw that with the XG. I'm looking for a better result. I want to beat them. Um, I haven't even looked where they are in the league. They are third in La Liga, one point behind Barcelona. So. They're pretty good. If we have a look at their Champions League record, obviously long-term, quite good, I've heard. Um, but the last few years, they won it four years ago. Um, haven't been doing great the last few years, though. But they are quite good. Let's see if we can beat them. And let's see if we can keep their attack at bay with a normal back four rather than a shenanigans back four. Um, obviously, first return to the Bernabeu for Jude Bellingham as well. So he's going to want to put in a bit of a show. And fingers crossed, he uh, he just decides today's the day he's going to absolutely rip his old team apart. Uh, Big Kev's got a cut hand. I don't think that should have any impact on his ability to play as a six foot eight centre forward. Therefore, we're not going to rush him onto the pitch, just uh, rushing him off the pitch just yet. Emil Hiskey, by the way, has won the Copper Award, um, which was won two years ago by Carrier, won multiple times by Bellingham, was won about three years ago, by uh, three years in a row by Lamine Yamal. It is the absolute top tier of the young players win that one and Hiskey has won it. So as much as we're enjoying this little period from Big Kev at the moment, I think it is only a matter of time before Emil Hiskey becomes our starting striker and probably one of the best strikers in the world. And, uh, we forget about Conor Egan entirely. Van Veen's been sent off here. So much for playing a normal back four for the match then, eh? We got, I mean, we didn't concede when we had a normal back four on the pitch. I think we sacrificed Van Aijma here. It's more logical to take off one of Carrier, Marrera and Herrera, isn't it? I think we take off Marrera, put Van Aijma alongside Bellingham, And then bring a left back on. And I think that left back will be. It will be Fontenelle. Fontenelle's. We'll have him playing normal, but I think we do. I mean, we've got to have a libero. We've got to have someone in that gap. That someone's going to be Suarez because he can do it. That's hugely risky. We're playing wing backs, a libero, and no DM. I apparently don't learn from things that have happened previously. Keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Attack, attack, attack. Big Kev hasn't turned up. Herrera hasn't turned up. These are the boys who are absolutely ripping Bundesliga apart, but maybe they're ju they've just not got it at Champions League level. Maybe. D is that fair? Can we say that? I think we're going to bring Emil Hiskey on in a minute and then come up with another plan because we're, we're I mean we're creating we're just not scoring defensively we've done excellently against Real Madrid worlds apart from what happened against Barcelona but we're just not creating anything going forward so Emil Hiskey's going to come on um, we're going to take off Van Aijma and bring on Ayadeli who can play in that same role and hopefully Hiskey is a different kind of striker 
can get in behind. We're not getting any change in the air out of this Real Madrid back four. But if we can maybe knock a ball over the top for Hiskey to chase, maybe he can do them for pace. Um, but Bellingham is now tiring. Herrera has just had a really poor game. Conor Egan's going to come on for him. We're not going to play him as a round oiter. He can just come on and play as a winger. And I think we'll take off Mormon as well as the final change. We're going to bring on Dukic and actually play a proper libero in there. Yeah, and we'll do that. And maybe maybe grab a goal. Grabbing a goal would be nice. Schakowsky's missed out there, but Bellingham is there to collect. And now Ayadeli. This is our first attack seemingly in the entire match. Not a lot has happened today, but Carrier plays it across. He's hit the crossbar. Schakowsky, Egan, can't keep it down. That felt like that was probably the chance to win the game. Real Madrid, as it stands at top of the group, we are uh, we are not. We have not had the best of starts to our Champions League campaign. As it stands, one win, one draw, one defeat. Unless we can grab a late winner here. Carrier, can he slide it across? He can't. He's just lost the ball. Um, but Fontenelle's wins it back and now Carrier plays it back into Fontenelle's. He does slide it across and Hiskey got there ahead of his defender. But by the time he got the shot away, the defender was across to cover and it's a corner. And this is where we could do with having... Big Kev still on the pitch. We do still have some big boys, though. They're all going to be forward. It's a Jude Bellingham corner. It's an in-swinger to the far post where Fontenilles is the guy who I think got, got the final touch. Him and Hiskey were both up for it. Neither of them able to get onto it. And it's the, literally the reverse issue we've had in that game. Against Barcelona, we defended awfully. Against Real Madrid, despite being down to 10 men for half the game, we just couldn't finish. It's just a mental block against these top teams, I think, more than anything. I think we're good enough. We just need to figure out how to prove it. And I I don't really know how we do that. Oh, good. We've still got to play Inter as well. So I guess that'll be next episode. We'll probably do Bayern in the league, Inter in the Champions League. And that will be the next episode. And we'll see if we can maybe win on camera. Wouldn't that be a thing? A win on camera would be a real novelty at the moment. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.